Hey, it's Charlie here. This is my uh, 94 Mazda RX-7. I'm putting the LS2 motor in it. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the connectors for the wiring that you'll have to do. Uh, they're outlined online pretty well, but their location isn't always the obvious. I figured a quick video will, will help. Um, so here's the motor, the wiring harness that comes off the motor on the LS motor. This is the LS2 from a 06 Pontiac GTO comes out right here and I've folded it over uh, to run along the firewall over to right here uh, this is the ECU I mounted it here the wiring uh, met up with it pretty much perfectly some people do run the wiring and put the ECU inside uh, the wiring that's on the motor wouldn't have reached if I did that that's more if you're running uh, kind of an aftermarket universal swap harness, they tend to make them longer because they could be going in uh, different kinds of vehicles. Uh, I figured under the hood is good um, because that's where it was to begin with and they can get a little bit warm. I didn't want it uh, heating up the cabin anymore. Uh, so off that harness, there's going to be three big connectors. Um, two of them are going to just plug right into the ECU. You're not going to have to touch. Uh, the other big connector is this blue guy right here. Um, this is known as the C1 connector. It's what you're going to be doing most of uh, your merging in. Um, and this I'm running right in through the firewall. Uh, some people do use the big rubber grommet off the LS motor. They'll modify their, their firewall so it meets the right diameter. Um, they'll use that and shove it in. Uh, I saved this grommet though off the RX-7 harness. Um, I untaped it and pulled it off. Uh, the LS wiring uh, loom fits right through it pretty well actually uh, and that way I didn't have to modify the firewall at all it's the right size hole it'll it'll fit just like factory um, coming off one of the other harnesses right down here you see there's this Y uh, and it comes up and there's this pigtail right here and it has a bunch of connectors this is what it um, looked like before I hacked it off uh, I don't know what this connector is called. Some of the diagrams refer to it as connector 4. Um, but there are a few wires in here that you will need to use. There's some that go to the reverse lights. Um, for instance, uh, so you will, you will need to, to use this. And then if you were to follow this back down where it, where it does the little Y right here, I've got it all taped up, but there was another little pigtail coming out of here with two wires on it. That's for the horn. Um, and you won't need that. You can stagger your cuts, tape it up, uh, and that's all you need to do there. Um, so that's the main C1 connector, the connector 4, tape off the horn. Um, the other LS connector that you'll need to find um, is right here. Now this is a, the MAC plug sensor. It's right off the same harness. It's the longest one in the chain. Uh, I don't know what this connector is called. Some people refer to it as connector 5. Uh, there's five wires in it. Three of the wires uh, you'll have to um, cut and splice power into. And that's pretty much it for the LS connectors. Um, so let's look for the Mazda connectors. Uh, while we're under the hood, we'll take care of this one real quick. This is connector X12. It's the big fat one here on the driver's uh, strut mount support. Um, there's a wire in here that you'll need to ground for the coolant buzzer. Um, so you'll get rid of that annoying sound when you're in the, the cabin. Uh, aside from that, under the engine bay, uh, you are going to have to mount the stock Mazda RX-7 oil pressure uh, sensor and the coolant sensor if you want the gauges to work. Right down here is where I mounted the coolant sensor. So I am going to have to run a wire out to this guy. Um, I haven't mounted the oil pressure sensor yet, but when I figure out where to put that, I'll also have to run wire into it. Um, so let's take a look at the inside now. Oh, so this is the inside of the car. This is where the factory ECU was right here. I've removed that. I sold the rotary motor with all the wiring and ECU uh, to some guy on Craigslist because you won't need it anymore. Um, you can mount the the LS2 ECU here. It just gets warm and there's not a real clean way to mount it. 
um, and my wiring wouldn't have reached it anyway, so that's why I put it in the engine bay. Um, right here is the XO5 connector. It's uh, this blue 12-pin connector. Um, you can see I have a little pigtail on it, and I have that pigtail because of this guy right here. Um, this was a recall that Mazda did. This is actually a fan controller box. Uh, it was to keep the fans running when the motor was turned off so that it would cool down. So if you have a 93 or, or maybe even up to mid-94, since this is a 94, um, you may have this little extra wire harness. Uh, and if you do, it'll, it'll help you because you can cut the pigtail off and it'll give you some more wiring to work with with this XO5. Uh, you won't need that recall thing afterwards. So this connector up here is the B120 connector, and it went to a metal box that mounted right up on this guy. And you won't need that either, but you will need to find this connector. Um, you'll have to move the blower motor and the, the AC box under the dash. Um, it's not a huge pain to do. It'll definitely give you a lot more working room. Uh, but you'll need to tap into a few wires here. One of them's for the check engine light. The other kind of notorious hard to find connector is this X14 connector. And that's right here. The female end is attached to this dash harness up here. Um, this little extension harness uh, also came from that recall thing, which worked out pretty well because that'll give me some more wires to work in. I want to work in this two inch section up here. Um, but this is a problem for a lot of cars because the wiring that they're going to give you is based on the color down here and it actually changes color for some strange reason uh, when it goes up here. Um, so you want to pay extra close attention. Uh, there are some color conversion charts on the forum somewhere uh, to make sure that you got the right wire color. And you're going to be tapping into this uh, quite a bit actually. There's some dash lighting grounds, the, the water temp sensor that you'll have to run back through the firewall um, is into here. Now this guy right here coming through the firewall, this is that blue C1 connector that was in the engine bay. And some of those wires uh, aren't going to hook up to anything. Um, I'm still going to keep them there taped up in case they ever do want to hook up to any. Those are going to be things like, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe the the oil pressure sensor for the actual LS2 motor and not the one that feeds to your cluster. Um, there may be some other guys in there. I'm not sure exactly what they are as of yet. Um, then you're going to have some wire that's going to go over to the driver side. Uh, there's going to be six wires for your drive-by-wire pedal. There's going to be this uh, wire that's twisted. Um, this is for the ODB2 connector. Uh, you're going to have to buy one and put it under your dash somewhere because the, the RX-7 was an ODB2. Um, and then you're going to have some other wires that isn't going to go to the driver's side. I've got this separated over here. Some of these uh, are going to go to that X14 connector, that X05 connector, that, that uh, B120 connector. Some are going to go to the digital decoder box. Um, that's to convert the speed sensor off the, the T56 transmission um, so that the speedometer will, will read the right miles per hour. Um, that's pretty much it over on the passenger side. Now the driver's side, let's see if I can crawl through here. The driver's side, there really isn't a whole lot over here. There is this blue connector. There's actually two of them, they're pretty pretty big, it's the top one. It's gotta be the one with with uh, the really wide connectors in it, not all the little pinned ones. There's a wire in here you can tap into for the oil pressure uh, sensor. You can also try to find the wire under the hood. Uh, you gotta have a connector down there that was attached to the clutch. So when the clutch pushes in, it, it can uh, signal it's okay to start the car. You're going to have to utilize those wires, and then you're going to have the drive-by-wire pedal. So that's right here, that's the Sandberg 
mount right up there. And it's got a, you're gonna need the pigtail and that's what six of those wires coming from the C1 harness will attach to. So that's pretty much it for connectors. There's only a handful of them. Um, the wiring's actually not that bad at all. Uh, it's pretty easy to get to. You technically don't need to remove your dash. I've heard people have done it by removing the glove box and, and taking the AC thing out and the, the blower motor. Um, I figured it would be easier just to pull the dash, give me more working room. Uh, I was able to kind of refresh the, the heater core boxes and put new foam and stuff in it. Um, and it allowed me to pull the carpet out and put this heat wrap stuff on my transmission tunnel. So it was kind of a lot of benefits to pulling the dash. If you've, if you've never done it and have the time, I'd, I'd recommend it. If you're in a hurry and want to deal with it later, um, then, then you can work around it. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if anyone has any questions. Um, a lot of the, the wiring and, and uh, actual pin-to-pin -pin charts can be found on norotors.com. Uh, so hopefully this helps.